If you like this episode, please subscribe, share with others, rate and review so we can continue to bring you great programming. This is The Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Hello, this is Mickey Desai on The Thing About Cars with a solid table of friends around me today. All the way on the other side of the ocean, it's misty. How are you, misty? Amazingly, and for once, not moist. (laughs) (laughs) But but cold, I imagine, right? Yeah, it's about as cold as a witch's tit in a brass bra. Right, exactly. (laughs) Ben, how are you? Uh, I am pretty awesome, and... uh... Yeah, it's cold here too, but not terrible. Not that cold. Tim, trivia czar, Tim. How are you, Tim? Uh, dry and warm, thanks. Excellent. Yes. And our special guest for today is one an interview. This is going to be an interview, a conversation I've been looking forward to for a long time. Motorsports goddess, uh, <laughs> Destiny Spurlock, is at the table. Destiny, how are you? I am well. Thank you for having me on on guys i'm really yeah. excited about this interview today <laughs> yeah absolutely it should be fun you know it, it, we we tell our listening audience we're just a bunch of people who like to geek out about cars and driving in general um and and before we get into our guest segment uh tim do you have any trivia for us today i do uh awesome going back to the wonderful world of volkswagens um Westphalia produced the Volkswagen camper vans from the 1950s through the early 2000s. Uh, Westphalia plans to return to North America this year, selling a camper version of which van model? Is it the Kia Carnival, the Ram Promaster, the Volkswagen ID, or the Honda Odyssey? Oh, so, weird. Yeah. Okay. So again, and we'll come back to the end of the at the end of the episode uh, for everybody's best guess. But uh, those potential. Uh, Models again are the Kia Carnival, the Ram Promaster, the Volkswagen ID, or the Honda Odyssey. Interesting. Okay. At the end of the show. Very cool. Destiny, where in the country are you today? So I am here in Virginia. So ah. that's where I'm I know at. that I know your profession takes you around the country, if not the world. You have been referred to as the quickest woman on a BMW. Uh, your list of accolades is starting to look like a CVS receipt. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, there's just so much to say about your interest in motorsports in general. There's this, this, and, and I know you want to get away from the notion of just being on bikes. You do some fabulous stuff in cars as well. Uh, we should, pro- we should definitely talk about that, uh, that you've, that I think it was what last year that you completed your first formula car race. Yes. So I was racing in Formula Four um, with the Skip Barber Racing School. They have a Formula Four series. So I raced that series from April to November, I think. So that was super unexpected. Came out of nowhere. And but to say the least, I absolutely love the experience so much. <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a bunch to talk about. Um And I know you get interviewed all the time, so I don't want to make you rehash everything. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to focus on before we get into the mundane? No, you can go through whatever because, yeah, I do do a lot of interviews, but not everyone sees them. So and everyone's unique and different. So listen, I'll ask away. I'm here for whatever. (laughs) Very cool. Well, well, let's go for it. Yeah, let's go back to the beginning. No, I just have one question. Yes. Destiny, do you want to come to the Netherlands and I, I will let you drive my MX-5 on the Autobahn? Find <laughs> me up. Yes, I'm okay. there. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Nah, I'm <laughs> go for it, Tim. So, yeah, Destiny, when was your your first foray into any kind of motorized vehicle? Um, Me actually riding it or being on it? Let's do both. <laughs> okay. So, being on it. Three years old. I was on the back of the motorcycle with my mom and dad. So it started there. My dad got me a go-kart. I think I was six years old. So I used to ride that around the house, tearing up the yard. Then from there, went to, let's see, 16. 16 was when I my mom got me my first motorcycle. I raced that for about two months, and then I got the chance to race the BMW S1000 RR in 2010, and that's when everything just changed. That's when my life went from, oh, doing this as a hobby to, okay, I inspired to do this as a career. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Cool. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, Tim. 
<laughs> um, so let's see. So you, you, uh, you, your first actual drag race was at, at what age? What year? I was 16, 17 years old. Um, I was going to the test and tune days at my local track at Virginia Motorsports Park. So that's when I was kind of getting my feet wet. Um, and then I think I went straight into racing the, at then it was the My Rock series. So I raced like Street ET, Pro ET, and 560 Index. Okay, nice. Yeah. So what's it like going on over 160 miles an hour and two wheels? Or In this way, I'm thinking you must have gone much faster than that. You've done a, a 4.6 at South Georgia Motorsports. Uh, yeah. What's it like? I mean, I can't imagine that much acceleration and that much speed on two wheels. So when I first started, it was super exhilarating because it was new. So literally going 100 down the drag strip was seen fast. Now it's like very slow. I'm not going to say it's boring because it's fun. It's just like, oh, okay. Let me, I look at my time slip. Oh, you want 170. All right, cool. It doesn't <laughs> feel like it anymore because I've been doing it so long. So everything is slower now. Mm-hmm. But going into NHRA where I'll be racing my Buell, Pro Stock Motorcycle, they go, you know, 200 plus, which I have gone very close to that on a street style motorcycle on the drag strip. But that motorcycle is completely different. Um, So it is going to be a little more sped up now. (laughs) It's fun. Like, I don't know. It gives me kid in a candy store vibes. (laughs) Nice. Amen. Amen, sister, because that is like, you know, as, as you already know, I have an MX-5. I have one of the first 2016 MX-5s. Her name is Claudette. And people hey, are Claudette. like, <laughs> and she is so red. I mean, because that's oh, the only color to have. I mean, you know, you see the back wall here. I mean, it's red. Red it. is good. <laughs> you know, and people are like, you know, oh, why would you buy a convertible in the Netherlands? Because it rains all the time. And I'm like, honey, let me tell you, if it's not precipitation falling out of the sky and it's above zero, the top is going down because that is why God invented seat heaters and a heating system. <laughs> See, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Right. I, 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 I do have one question because I noticed on your website, it said that you have corsets in your riding suit. And yes. as someone who has more corsets than I have hand, than, than I have fingers <laughs> and knows that the typical, yeah, because I'm I, and all of these guys are sitting here going, but don't corsets make your organs go squishy, squishy, squishy? And I'm like, no, they don't. <laughs> not if they're done properly, they don't. Exactly. So even, not if they're done properly. That. Yep. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. (laughs) And it's funny that you bring that up because so one of my latest videos that I posted on my Instagram has gone viral and all of these comments are hilarious. I get people. Okay. So backstory for those of you don't, that don't know my leather suit is rose gold in color and it has the corset on the back. So for people that don't know that they see it and they think I just have one like an outfit. They're like, oh, you need to protect yourself. Oh, why do you have on this shiny thing? You need to get leathers. And I'm like, guys, this is a leather professional suit. The corset (laughs) is, you know, part of the creativity of my signature. So I put it on here. It's okay, guys. (laughs) Yeah. But I love my corset. So yeah. is the is the corset merely an element of creativity, or does it add some protective benefit as well? well no, it's just create creativity. Um, well, I can I will say it, it probably does give a little more layer of protection because it is another layer of leather that's outside of the base le- um base layer. Yeah. So yeah, but it's it has no function. It's yeah, it's there to. But it also, you. I mean, I, I know for me, which I have, you know, I have. You know, underbust, overbust, cinches, you know, I have, like I said, more than I have, um, not as many as I have fingers and toes, but close. Um, and, and I think the, the the last time I shared a picture between these guys, everybody was like, um, are we going for like dark librarian? And I went, yeah, that's exactly the look we're going for. Um, but they just feel good. Mm-hmm. They do. You no, know, I mean it's you know it, it's so much more comfortable than what we would consider traditional undergarments. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they Missy, just feel making- good. You make me want a corset. Right. Uh, I mean, right now, I think we need to throw over to Ben, who is our, uh, you know, native motorcycle rider. Ben and, wearing uh, corsets is not, you know, an unusual thing, Mickey. And if you need some help in sizing and in lacing, uh, you know, I'm, feel free to give us a call and we'll be more than happy to help. I, I'm coming to you first, Misty. That's what I'm going to do. Yes. I've never tried one on, but it might go well with my kilts. So, hey, there's a thing. <laughs> See? Nice. There you go. I have a lot of Scottish blood, so I do own more than one kilt. Uh, Accessorizing properly. 
Yeah, motorcycle thing. Well, this fastest woman on a BMW thing. So how much faster than Valerie Thompson are you? Okay, so Valerie, she does salt flats and all that good stuff. Right. Um, it's different because I'm on the drag strip per se. Right. And that title was only in for Curacao. Um, ah. at that time. And I think I still hold it. That was uh, 2012 or something like that. Right, right. But the thing is, Valerie, I, I've always looked up to her. Actually, her wow. and I were supposed to get together on the Salt Flats together back in 2013. Oh. But it acted it actually fell through and I was really heartbroken because I've looked up to her so uh, for so long, but well, yeah, it's not that, too late. You can still do it. <laughs> listen, let's do it. That yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's, yeah. let's make this happen again. <laughs> I'd like to be there to watch as, as someone who's merely quick on a BMW GS. And when I say merely quick, I'm exaggerating probably. And <laughs> <laughs> you're probably the most safety conscious rider I've ever met. Oh, yeah. uh, there is that. Yeah, I do the full, you know, all the gear all the time, all that stuff. I look like a Power Ranger when I ride, uh, you know, and it does not <laughs> take away from the ride at all. In fact, it allows me to focus on it better. That's you know, right. Pe yeah. People who, who, you know, don't like helmets, they don't realize that with your head inside that thing, you're not as bombarded by, you know, the outside world and you really can focus on the ride more. Uh, yeah. And Okay. And, so, and, and it keeps you know, like dust and stones and bugs and things mm -hmm. out of your face. I, I know from experience, I've been hit in the head by a bird while riding. Uh, you know, Only been. Yeah. Only been. On a cooler day, it'll keep your head warm. On a hotter day, it'll keep you from getting heat stroke. Yeah, I love my helmet. Love it. Yeah, same. yeah the only problem, though, is, you know, you don't have quite enough hair to have helmet hair and then i see you know and I, I i started riding i started riding dirt bikes i guess when i was about the same age as you destiny mm -hmm. uh, and started riding uh my first uh, ride as a passenger on a street bike i was six nice. so i actually have my iron ass badge um <laughs> because when so, my step when my stepdad first met my mom um he had a harley sportster no so destiny, not as a passenger <laughs> <laughs> okay true. One quick question for you, and, I, and then I want to focus on the transition to cars. Um, this picture of you on your website, I see the rose gold um, jacket, the part of your your armor. Uh, can you? The bike is just beyond sexy. You on top of the bike, it makes me pause. It just it's just so all that carbon fiber, all those sleek lines. Uh, <laughs> can, can can you briefly tell us about that machine, and then yeah. we'll and then we'll focus to the cars. So that is my Buell uh, NHRA Pro Stock motorcycle that I'll be racing this 2024 season. Um, that is my baby. So I've always inspired to race an NHRA Pro Stock um, ever since uh, God knows before I even got into drag racing myself. Um, and so I got presented this opportunity where I got the chance to purchase this motorcycle along with four other motors and all this other stuff. And it was in a transition period where I had just stopped racing a motorcycle for one team and the time couldn't have been more perfect. It was like, I've always said this, it was like, God was like, this is your time to go. So I got a chance to purchase um, the Buell. And like I said, we have four motors with it. We are focusing on getting to three races. Hopefully it will be Gainesville in March, the Virginia Motorsports Park uh, NHRA race, I think it's June or July, and then Indy. But um, yeah, that's that's my baby. <laughs> everybody yeah. said, oh, because it's a V-twin. So everybody's like, oh, like you're small. Are you going to be able to handle that thing? They shake a lot. They vibrate a lot. And I've always been told you, you learn at where you start. So if you don't know yeah. the differences between versus the Buells and the Suzuki's and it's all new to you, then you only learn, know what you're learning. So I'm ready for the challenge. I know I can do it. Um, I'm doing a lot of work, oh, you know, on off season. So I'm ready. <laughs> it doesn't take a big person to control. Them. I mean, it's very yeah. subtle inputs. A person any size can ride any bike as long as they can yeah. reach everything. <laughs> exactly. Trust me, yeah. I get so much crap about that. I'm like, guys. Yeah. I played football in middle school and high school with the boys. I can I do that. it. <laughs> I saw yeah, that. I, 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 was, I was like the, the youngest girl and like all my cousins were boys. You know, it's like, yeah. I, think I, I think I can hold my own. That's right. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like, I mean, and I, I, I grew up in a garage. My, my granddad was an auto mechanic. Oh, um, you know, so for, for me, it was, you know, uh, and I was not allowed to get my driver's license until I could do a full tune up on my 1978 Toyota Corolla. 
healthy. <laughs> and I'm like five, three and a half on a good day. And when Wee. I was in high school, I was so small to tighten the oil pan plug. I would have to brace my knees on the bumper, you know, to get the <laughs> leverage. But I can still do everything, you know, and, yeah. uh, you That's know, and right. some, you know, and guys are like, oh, you can't do that. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I you watch. It. I right. watch. Tim, Tim, did you have a question yes. before we move on to cars? Yeah, I was wondering, Disney, have you always owned the motorcycles that you've raced or have you, how has that worked out in your career? So I've always had a motorcycle that was my own that I've raced, but throughout the years I got presented opportunities where other teams wanted me to be their rider on their team. So I've always done both, but I've always believed in owning my own things because you have more creative control over what you're doing, how you're doing it, partnership opportunities that come around and mm -hmm. all of that. So it's great to race on other teams. Like I love it. It's cool. But when you have your own, you can really push the limiter to where you want to go. Right. And uh and how are how involved do you get on the actual nuts and bolts of your your bike for a for a race weekend? Just like Misty said, I'm very involved. I'm very mechanically inclined. I love to be able to know about the bike that I'm on, whether it's, you know, well, for NHRA, you have to change valve springs like every so, so many passes. Like, you know, there's so much to do on this side as to the previous series that I was racing in. So this is a totally new thing for me, a whole new learning curve. And I just want to learn everything. Literally, I want to be there when they're taking these motors apart. I want to know, you know, how much torque is on this nut and bolt or, you know, the, the clutch setup, everything, the tuning aspect of it. I want to know as much as I can, because as much as I know about the motorcycle helps me when I'm doing my, my runs, I can give as much driver feedback as possible to my team and tuners. Hell yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Heck yeah. Mickey, yeah. I, I want to yeah. jump in really quick and ask if you would think it would be possible to facilitate a meeting between Destiny and Loxley. You know, you're reading my mind. It's on my list. Destiny, are you familiar with Loxley Brown and her efforts with Athena Racing? I'm not. No. Well, remind me offline and we'll introduce you. Loxley's a friend of the show and she has uh, uh, this educational um, uh, effort. Her mission is to get more girls into STEM sciences and they do a lot with the racing world uh, to facilitate this. So yep. if you're up for that, I'll pass on the and contact. I and, and, and I think it was this past summer that they had a camp at, at Indianapolis oh, where the, yeah. the, 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 that it was actually sponsored by DHL and they were taking, you know, showing uh, these young ladies to not only the racing side of it, but also like the logistics side of it, you know, yes. so it, she, and she's talking about not just, you know, racing, but uh, designing logistics, you know, everything to do around a transportation, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. Right. She, yeah, yeah, her, yeah, her oh, program leads fun. a lot in. Oh, okay. Sorry, go ahead, Destiny. Oh, no, I was going to say that's funny because I also drive tractor trailers. Like I've owned my own company um, previously for years. So I know all about the logistics of things and all of that. So literally, this is everything that I do in one cup. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. how to change motors. I know how to change clutches. I know what it takes to get there, how much fuel. Like, so this will be yeah. great. I'll, I'll definitely, cool. she's definitely worth knowing in the scene for sure. Um, let's, let's talk about the transition to cars. So you, you know, you started yes. off, you got all this wonderful action happening on motorcycles, but, but why cars? If, I mean, if you're at home on a bike, what was the drive to, to drive? Okay. I love when I get this question. It's my favorite. So um, when I was little, like maybe five years old, um, well, since birth, my grandparents is all, have always lived in the same home. And it was two miles up the road from the NASCAR track. So my poppy is a huge NASCAR fan. And we would be in the house watching the NASCAR race while hearing it out our window. So it was nice. the most amazing experience ever for me because it's like, not only am I watching these cars on TV, which my poppy loves and my poppy's my heart. So I'm, I'm <laughs> loving whatever he's loving, but to be able to create a true passion for NASCAR racing is where it started through my grandfather. Um, so I always wanted to do NASCAR before bikes. Like that was my thing. And so I got the chance to go to a NASCAR race when I was little, loved it. The sound, the engines turned me up. I said, okay, what do I gotta do to, to do this? So there was a league called the um, Arena Racing USA League in Virginia, where we raced these half scale NASCARs in the Richmond Coliseum. So that was my first taste of 
what racing cars was like. Even though it was carts, I was like, okay, like I'm ready for the big, big car. Let's do this. Um, so I raced that for about three years or so, loved it. Then I got back into motorcycle racing because there was I, I couldn't quite figure out how to get the funding to race cars because that was completely different from what I've ever done. I didn't even know where to start. So I focused back on motorcycles. Then I got the chance right before COVID, I got enough funding to do some testing in a late model car um, at Dominion Speedway. So I got a chance to get my feet wet, learn how the car works, how it moves, how it feels. And then COVID came and killed it. Uh, So then what happens again? We go back to motorcycle racing because that's (laughs) familiar. Like, it's easy. I know what to do. Let's do it. And then... um, I was at the SEMA show in 2022. Uh, A guy named Rod Reed came up to me because his uh, Formula car was in, well, Indy Lights car was in the same booth as my motorcycle. And I had to sit in the car to move it. So he comes up to me. He's like, oh, you look good in that car. Like, would you want to (laughs) race one of these? I said, yeah. You know, I'm thinking he's joking. (laughs) Sure, let's do it. So... He said, okay, I'm going to get your information. I'll be in contact with you. I got back from SEMA like on Sunday. He calls me on Monday. He's like, all right, we're going to skip Barber Racing School so you can get your licensing and learn the car. We'll see how you do. Okay, cool. Ended up doing absolutely great. Got the chance. And then that's how I got the chance to race the formula in the formula series. So it's like dream come true. (laughs) But now we're back. To motorcycles because they're doing NHRA Pro Stock this year. So it's like True. I do both when I can. But, you know, right now my main focus is NHRA Pro Stock because, I, you know, it's it's a huge embarking moment on my career. And it's something yeah. I've always. Well, let me ask. I mean, is it simply a question of funding? Could you conceivably juggle the two within the same year? Like oh, definitely. You could, Easily. You could ride a, yeah. You could ride a motorcycle yeah. one week yeah. and go drive a race car the next week. And that's kind of what I did last year because I was going back and forth between the XDA racing series for motorcycles and the Skip Barber um, formula series. It, I only missed one motorcycle race because it conflicted with the schedules. But other than that, I would love to be able to do both. Um, and I think it helps me on both sides because they both have different aspects that coincide with each other. So yeah. like people thought, okay, when you get in this formula car, they're fast, like it's going to freak you out. I'm like, yeah, this is slow. You know, because I'm so <laughs> used to going zero to 60 in one second, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a lot more momentum involved in a, a Formula Ford rather than pure acceleration. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, just yeah. keep so, talking because I am struggling because, you know, it, it, it is now the off season for Formula One. And I am a, you know, it's like, everybody knows I'm not a morning person. Okay. I do not do mornings. Yeah. I will be up on a Sunday at 6 a.m. for Suzuka. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it yeah. is very, it is very, very serious. Um, oh, no. So my, you know. my my boyfriend and I, we're huge um, Formula One fans, too. So it'll be mornings. He has his alarm set for 2 a.m. because that's what time the race comes on over here. And I'm, like, rolling over looking. Okay, what lap is it? All right, I'm going to lay back down. What lap is it? <laughs> yep, 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 yep. yep. So, um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm sitting here planning going, you know, because um, I live about 35 kilometers away from Zonfort. Okay. Um, but it's insanely expensive. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to kind of maybe put together a group trip to spa. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. See? I want to go there. See? And, it's, it, it, and it's actually maybe about two, two and a half hours from where I live. Okay. Um, and... Um, if you go with just a little further, then you're in Luxembourg. And Luxembourg is amazing because that is the uh, Ardennes Mountains, which are very similar to the Appalachian Mountains. So you have those same motorcycle roads like you have up near Cherokee, Helen, Hiawassee. They go, and there's an amazing winery there as well. Um, <laughs> so it's right, road trip. I'm coming to visit. <laughs> road trip. Yep. Exactly. I, I, I have got a spare room. Um, I'm about 20 minutes from Schiphol Airport. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, just. 
let me know. Uh, and, um, you know, I'll make sure that the refrigerator is stocked and um, the bed is made up. And, uh, and, and and my son will just have to stay at his daddy's that weekend. He'll just get over it. He'll just, he'll just <laughs> suck it up, buttercup. Um, I've got I've got one more question before we get to our, 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 our standardized questions for Destiny Age. Does anyone else have anything they want to touch on before I do this last question? Tim. Oh, yeah. I do, because I also want to say that the... Uh, <laughs> I just stop. called on Tim. <laughs> no, go ahead, Misty. Then I'll I'll, I'll no I'll because the 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 also t uh, TT is the last weekend in June. If you want to see all the pretty Moto GP bikes go zoom 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 zoom. I've, zoom. I've always wanted to see that. You know, watching something on TV versus being in person is totally different. So oh yeah, yeah. yeah. and and you actually the the three day tickets for Asa are under two hundred euros. Really? Yeah, that's not bad at all. It's like it's like super super cheap. I mean, like well, for grandstand I'm, I'm, seats. I'm very poor, so I'm going to have to start saving them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Go for it, Tim. Um, yeah, I've got a question uh, for doing the the Skip Barber series. I know that they're spec cars run by a spec organization. Um, how much uh, tuning are is your crew allowed to do to the car as far as setup? You know, they're all exactly the same alignment. Nothing. 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 The exact wow. same. Everybody gets the same amount of fuel. There's no tuning done that's different. Everything. And we only get two set of tires mm -hmm. for the weekend. So we wow. do two practices, two qualifyings, and two races. And we only get two sets of tires for all of that. And like right. practice, I think 25 minutes. And then qualifying, I think is. 20 minutes and then the race is 25 minutes so that's a lot of time on these tires so you have to learn how to conserve you know <laughs> when it comes right. to your racing styles so that was a challenge for me um because it's totally new and yeah i'm a kind of excuse my language but balls to the walls type girl like i don't yeah. like to hold back but I learned really quick that I have to. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a definite learned art to to manage a racing tire through uh, yeah an entire weekend. That's I mean that, that, that's a it's a low number of tires. But Tim, I'm, I'm going to actually switch to you for a moment. Wouldn't this be the perfect setup to do the final decision on who's the better driver, Max or Lewis? <laughs> that's uh, an easy answer to this question. Tires? Yes, let's put well, destiny you know, in the yeah. Sorry, you know, you, all, all you know, have to know is that whenever uh, uh, Lewis Hamilton would radio into his crew chief and say, Bono, my tires are shot, and then he'd go for another 30 laps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a mind game thing. Like, you know? Oh, yeah. oh it, it, yeah. it, it, it totally is. It totally is. You know, and then I, I think absolutely sometimes radio is the best part of Formula One. It is. Right, yeah. it is. I'm, I miss Kimmy. Can, can we all just have a moment? I'm, I'm Yes. Leave me alone. I know what I'm I know doing. What to do. <laughs> um, so I, I, again, I've got two two things to touch on here. One of them short, and, and the short one is the funding issue. So how, one is if it is a matter of funding, how do you go about seeking that bigger, better audience? How do you get behind a, a, a faster wheel? Is there is there are there steps to get behind from Formula Four to Formula One? Um, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, we could briefly talk on that, and then go ahead, go ahead, Destiny. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah, it's definitely a huge gap as far as funding. I'm going from Formula 4, 3, 2, 1. Every bracket, the money goes up and it's not cheap mm -hmm. at all, especially when you're traveling so far in so many races. And, you know, we're going from having to worry about two tires, well, really one on motorcycles to now four. That in itself, you're, you're going from a $500 tire budget to tens of thousands you know, budget just in tires. So that gives you an idea of how drastic it it changes from level. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, mm, it's yeah, so, it's it's hard. <laughs> real quick, because I because uh, we're running out of time, and I'm, I'm aware of that. But uh, uh, can you briefly comment on the psychological work that it takes to get ready for a race? Is there a a ritual, a a, a, a set of prep exercises that you do, or do you just hop on and go? So I love that you asked me that because that has been my biggest struggle, just not even only in motorsports, but in life in general. And that's something that I've made a point, especially for this year, to mentally get myself in a place where nothing's going to bother me. Nothing's going to shift me. I'm always locked in. Um, so mentally, my biggest thing is 
is meditating. I love to meditate before races. Um, Because one year I used to do that a lot and then I got away from it and I can feel the difference. So meditating before and listening to music, whatever my heart desires at that time, whether it is rap or gospel or hip hop or country, whatever it is, I listen to it. I get focused and I just replay my whole routine in my head up until I get into the burnout box to go race. And that helps me because now it makes it more of a less conscious thing. It, you know, it's stuck in my subconscious. So it's like, it's already there. Let's go. Let's do it. Yep. Yeah. Well, I know what you mean, Destiny. I, I've done some SECA club racing in sedans and I can, you know, truly say that the, uh, when I've had good days, my, my head has been in the right place. And mm-hmm. my, the last event that I did where I rode off a car, my head was not in the right place. And yes, yes, yeah. it's a real thing. Exactly what you said. If your mind is not in the right place, you are not going to have a successful, week. not to say you're not, but it's not going to be as successful as it could be if you're truly locked in. Right, right. All right. So our standardized questions, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, and then we're going to try to answer Tim's question. We've got seven minutes left in this episode. Destiny, what's your dream car? What is Destiny's dream car? It, I would have to say a Lamborghini Aventador. Ah. Um, I'm a little girl. I, I love them. Low slung, low slung yeah. and sexy. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, number two, where is your next road trip going to be? Next road trip is going to be probably to Florida to go testing um, our pro stock motorcycle. So, yeah. Oh. Very cool. Very cool. Question number three, uh, what's the most fascinating thing you've seen on the road or maybe in someone's garage? Oh, when I was in SEMA. So it was, you guys probably seen it on, on social media. It was a V-dub um, bug, but it was flipped upside down and he was driving it. So it looked like he was driving an upside down car, but it nice. really wasn't. And that was the coolest thing I've seen. But I got to add <laughs> it's one more thing too. I saw the um, the replica tractor trailer version of cars that this guy oh. did. And that was awesome. So yeah. <laughs> Nice. Pretty cool. Um, our last question for you is always something uh, random and silly that I have from a pre-selected list of random and silly questions here. So uh, what's your favorite ice cream? My favorite ice cream? Oh, I have two. So I love sherbet or sorbet, however you want to say it. Um, but I love gelato. Any type of gelato ice cream, I'm I'm here for. It. I'm a gelato girl. Yum. I have a place for you. Was yum, there yum, last yum. June? They have like 30 yeah. some odd flavors. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just don't drink whatever it is they offer you at the little cafe at the end of the main street in that little particular village. I don't know what that was. Um, it, it, it was not suitable for human consumption. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm right there with you on the gelato. Awesome. And take it away. Let's take yeah. take us to the trivia thing, and then we'll wrap the episode. All right, we'll take it from the top. Uh, so Westphalia produced the Volkswagen camper vans back from the 1950s to the early 2000s, mm-hmm. and they plan on returning to North America this year, selling a camper version of which van model? And our choices are uh, the Kia Carnival, the Ram Promaster, the Volkswagen ID, or the Honda Odyssey. And I guess we'll offer this up to uh, guest goes first. Destiny, what's your best guess? Volkswagen ID. Gotcha. Okay. Ben? You know, my gut agrees with that, but just because I like to be weird and goofy, I'm also going to say the Honda Odyssey because uh, Dave Grawl loves his Honda Odyssey. <laughs> so I'm going to guess both. <laughs> Rock and roll, dude. Okay. Uh, all right. Misty? Uh, I'm going to go with the Volkswagen ID as well. Okay. And Mickey? You know, I I, I want to say I've heard about that in the news as the Volkswagen ID, but like Ben, I'm not sure. So let's say the, what was the first one, the Kia? Uh, Kia Carnival, yes. Kia okay. Carnival. Um, yeah. uh, well, according to Car and Driver, uh, it's going to be the Ram Promaster. No so kidding! Like, yeah. What? <laughs> That's yeah. that like Fiat-based cargo thing, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know what it looks like. I'm. <laughs> I think I know the I'm one you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 2023 Ram Promaster looks like a, a Sprinter. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess that, that. I'm sorry. What? No, <laughs> no. Right. I'm ve- I'm I'm vetoing this. Okay, I don't care. I don't care who thinks that's you know. I, ve- no. Well, no. I have you know, counted. I, no, I have thought it through. I've counted to three, and I put my foot down. <laughs> All right, here's something you need in a good camper van. You need a low, flat floor, and those things have it. Yes, well, I'm, looking, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at it, and it looks really cool, I must say. 
Uh, it looks like a sprinter with some conversions done to it. it that's looking pretty nice. So, Destiny this is Spurlock, why I am not impressed, Face. Destiny Spurlock, thank you very much for being our guest today. It's been a real honor to have you on the show. Uh, I hope our paths can cross again soon. If you come through Atlanta, please give me a call and uh, let's make some arrangements to go out and play or something. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to definitely hit you up, uh, Mickey, and I'm definitely Misty. I'm coming over there. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. If you want to um, ride yeah, the and- North Georgia mountains? Call me. Yeah. Oh, and- <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely calling you too, man. <laughs> and just to yeah. let you know where I live, my apartment directly across, I mean, like you can see it from my balcony, is a wine bar that serves some of the best Portuguese green wine. Oh. Like, oh. Like, 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 you just know me because I'm a wine girl. Yeah. That's me, so. It's, it's okay. like, you know, like, like even, <laughs> even my best friend is like, Okay, this is good wine, and he never says it's good wine. Because Destiny, what, uh, where, we, where can we find you on social media? You can find me at destinyspurlock.com, and all socials is Destiny Spurlock. Okay, very cool. Uh, thanks again for being our guest, and again to our listeners, uh, thank you for joining us for this episode of The Thing About Cars. Please stay tuned. We'll have another episode for you ready as quickly as we can. In the meantime, everybody out there, stay warm, dry, and safe, uh, and take it easy on the road. See you soon. See ya. Best wishes. <laughs> Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.